Welcome back to Angling Buzz Ice presented by Fleet Farm. This episode's all about big fish. Our crew heads north to Lake Winnipeg to target monster greenbacks. There are very few places on the planet that have fish of that caliber. Dan Quinn and Jeremy Smith head to the river where they target giant lake sturgeon. Say this opportunity does not happen everywhere. Then we head west where we target monster lake trout. A lot of times you cut, you cut holes like that and you get one hooked up like that fast. Boy, are they beautiful. Look at that thing. There we go, nice jumbo Leech Lake special. Now we're out here on Leech Lake right now catching perch and walleye, but while I do this, let's head north to one of the best big walleye destinations anywhere in the world, Lake Winnipeg. Let's go check in on that action. We are with the Winnipeg master. Up and get the Looking rattle, for uh, hit it hard. giants on the big pond here. Roger, I wouldn't be surprised if it was an elephant. I think he's coming up the hole oh, now, yeah. Jeremy. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, and it, oh, it's a giant. Oh, uh, <laughs> Roger. Look at that thing. That is crazy, man. Absolutely nice a giant Winnipeg walleye. Every time we come up here, we end up running into absolute beasts like this. This place is absolutely famous yeah, for keeps, giant walleyes. Keeps pumping them out. It's good to see. <laughs> it's going to be a fantastic trip. This is an amazing place. It requires a lot of traveling and some kind of specialized equipment, really, to do it right to get on these big fish. So we'll go into some of that and hopefully get a few more of these along the way. Oh, whoa. I was up here with Roger and we catch, oh man, 100, 140 of these a day. Well, you're gonna get on fish. It's almost inevitable. Oh, no wow, pupper. that was cool, Jeff. Yeah. Did you even see them coming? I did not see it coming. They're just coming in so fast. It's crazy. So, Mr. Waldo, that's what we're after. You know, Jaron, Roger, and I are about 50, 50 yards apart. And we're all using different lures because we're just on the on the search now trying to dial in our program. I'm using a spoon. Jerry, I think, is using a jig and wrap and Roger's using a rattle spoon. So we're going to see what happens. And that's kind of our system. We'll move and move and move using different lures and refine from there. That's a nice one. That's a sweet fish. Come here, mister. Down the hatch with the jig and wrap. Cool, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful fish. And it's pretty cool how these fish can get definitely dialed in throughout the day on different presentations. We've been up here and seen it when you get a good group working. And that's one of the fun things about coming to Lake Winnipeg is a lot of times the more people you bring with you, the better the fishing will be simply because you can cover more water and you can find out what the fish are really dialed into. We've seen it so many times where all of a sudden it's everything's going crazy on a jig and wrap or it's a rattle bait or it might happen to be a spoon and then everybody can make those those adjustments. So I'm gonna let this one go and I'm gonna show you one other key thing I like to do with the setup for fishing these greenbacks. All right, there he goes. Now the equipment for fishing up here is you know, somewhat specialized. You do wanna use bigger equipment and really a lot of the equipment we're using is more like stuff you would fish lake trout through the ice with. So, you know, I'm, I'm fishing a little bit bigger reel, 2,000, 2,500 size, and then that 36 inch and longer. Right now I'm fishing with the Tundra, which is a 36 inch medium fast. It's got good flex. It can handle these, these bigger baits. And then for line, I really like fishing mono. You're fishing outside and you're moving a lot, and it doesn't seem like you have the issues with freeze up with mono. And then additionally, you get a little bit of stretch. I mean, there is very little between you and the fish. I mean, this is hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's like, you know, the, when you set the hook on the fish, they're only six, eight feet away from you. So having a little stretch in the system using mono seems to help. So I like the six pound advance. And then this is the other thing I've got with the system that I really like is I run a long leader. So I've just got a tiny little VMC, just an ant swivel there. And the small, the reason I use such a small swivel is it goes through your guides 
and can go through the roller on your reel as well. And then I run a leader that's about six inches longer than the depth of the ice. So that way when the, I, I see my leader right away, I know that the fish is close to the bottom of the hole and that's where you're gonna lose most of them. So then you can really tone things back and you're not smashing their head in right to the bottom of the ice. So having a longer leader makes a difference and I'm running 12 or 14 pound fluorocarbon because it really doesn't seem to make a difference to the fish. You know, up here in Manitoba, the regulations are barbless on Winnipeg here, so that's the deal, which is not a problem. You can keep those, I'm gonna let this girl go, keep those fish pinned, no problem. And usually with the spoon, you know, I've caught them without tipping, but up here, they sell these, these this dead bait, and it's, uh, they call them salties, so it's just a shiner uh, that are in the salt bath. And it probably wouldn't matter, but I've been tipping it. And in order for this to work, you know, my friend Roger Stearns came up with this, this hooking method. So you have your, your salty here, and you have three trebles that are barbless. So you wanna start with the head and put one in one treble, and then just work your way around. One goes in the stomach, and then this, the last one goes in the tail. And if that's not T-boned, I don't know what is, but you know, that's down in the, in the States, we would just use the minnow head or, or tip, maybe with a whole minnow, but most of the time it's a minnow head. Up here, where these fish are chomping, that's more than adequate. I've caught hundreds and hundreds of fish tipping it just like that. He is. I like fishing out of these eight inch holes. A lot of guys like the tens, but once you get them started in an eight inch hole, they just cannot escape. It's pretty, pretty cool. There he is, huh? Nice one. Not a giant, but nice. And that he was on the jig and wrap. Of course, one of the great all time lures for catching walleyes. But it's a little bit bigger than, you know, if I was back home in Minnesota, I'd be fishing a lot more of the size three, the size five for walleye up here, sevens and nines are not out of the question. So some of the tackle that you use up here is pretty unique. A lot of it's probably stuff you have, but it might just be a little bit bigger. So Jeff and Roger are gonna share with you what they like to pack on a trip to Lake Winnipeg to catch tons of big greenbacks. Gosh, look at the colors on that thing, huh? Yeah, it's pretty cool with, uh, with Roger. It was kind of on the forefront and the pioneered this lake. They used to only fish the river and then they moved out into the lake. And when that happened, you know, this is a huge body of water and, and what changed is the category of baits that you use to fish on uh, on this lake. Yeah, the big basin and uh, the visual and size of the lure for the fish to key in on and yeah. changed everything. You didn't come out here and fish an eighth or a quarter ounce jig. You, big lures. Bigger lures. And, and in the United States, I would say if you used anything bigger than a quarter ounce spoon, you didn't know what you were doing. Like that was too big a spoon. Up here, you start fishing with a quarter ounce. I don't have any in my box. Right. You didn't know what you were doing either. It was too small. So that, that was kind of open the thing. And I would say 20 years ago that the chubby darter was invented. That was kind of the first uh, larger swim type bait on the market. And that kind of, you know, actually in the ice fishing world, open up a new category of lures. The guys just weren't, we would just always use smaller baits. So boom, it opened up that, that category of lure. Well, the next thing Roger did, he was kind of on the forefront of, of this evolution of using bigger baits. And he went to uh, lipless crankbait. Yeah, and with the rattles in them. So um, out on Lake Winnipeg, the big basin, and you'd start running and gunning. gunning. I'd read about, uh, running and gunning on lakes like Malak and keeping up and chasing fish and so you want to pull up on a spot and not even fool around with bait at all. You draw a hole and drop down a lure. No bait required. And that, that's kind of with those horizontal lures, whether you're using a jig and wrap or, or a lipless crank bait or a chubby darter, that basically that looks like the profile of a bait fish. So you, you absolutely don't need bait. Yeah. Now we have discovered that there's times they won't hit it, right? And then we go to the larger spoons. And we're talking larger spoons. We're talking pretty good sized spoons, aren't we? Yeah, up to three and a half inches long. Yeah. So um, you gotta try everything. You do, you have to have, and then we're kind of doing that, aren't we? We have the, the rattle baits, we have the spoons, and then a little slower presentation. But we always err on the side of 
aggression, right? And big. When we start, aggression and big, that's how we start. And then once the fish kind of tell us what they want, we'll refine from there, or we'll just keep hammering them with those aggressive baits. That's right, and that's the funnest fishing there is. Oh, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just love that bite, those your fish moves in, whammo, right? He's gonna come back for it. Got him. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, it, like this is about all the line I have out where this walleye is. There's a reason right there to just use a little bit heavier leader too. When you're going through fish like we are up here, just have heavy line. The fish don't care, the water's dirty. It just makes life so much easier. Nice, so greenback. You know what, I might actually take that one home with me. Awesome. Ooh, oh, I like the looks of that rascal right there. Nice wall though. Whew. Cool. I'll tell you what else I like is what I caught it on. You know, we've been switching up. We're using spoons, you know, swim baits. Well, this is another swim bait. That's one we use all summer long. And that's that's just a paddle tail grub from Big Bite Baits. Uh, rigged so it hangs horizontally. But this thing is deadly. I've, I've caught several fish on this now, and they come in and just woof it. Super cool. He ate it, he ate it. What a beautiful time of year to be up in this part of the world. I, I love it. You know, you can come up here anytime there's ice. You're gonna have a good shot at catching, catching walleyes, but that March time frame really is the best. As soon as that water starts running through the ice, the creeks start flowing, it really is a dynamite time to get out here and catch tons of these Lake Winnipeg walleyes. They're just beautiful fish and when you land on them, the action is spectacular and you have a shot at some of the biggest fish in all of the world. I mean, there's fish in the teens up here, so it's really, really an awesome place to be. Look at this, sun is shining, there's no wind, and we're catching fish. Wow, Keevan, that was worth you hollering for, man. Look at the size of that thing. That is fantastic. Nice job, Keevan. That's why you come to Lake Winnipeg. Look at the size of this giant. <laughs> that is awesome. And that is why you come here. Thanks for the invite, my friend. Woo! Awesome place for giant fish and great action. But look at that. Look it's at got the girth volley. of a muskie. Unbelievable. Fills that 10 inch shuffle. Look at that. Like, you wouldn't believe. There are very few places on the planet that have fish of that caliber. That is amazing. Should we send her home? I think so. Beautiful. Holy smoke. Look at how fat that is. That is amazing. That's a 10 inch hole, and that fish <laughs> fills it up. Oh, wow. And she's ready to wave goodbye. Man, Lake Winnipeg's home to some true giants. Now let's head south and join Dan Quinn and Jeremy Smith as they target a prehistoric fish, the lake sturgeon. We have a fun afternoon evening planned. My dearest friend Dan invited me down to the river. The last time we fished the river, I think we caught 13 or 16 different species of fish, and one we didn't catch was the lake sturgeon. Oh, yeah! Hey, oh. Can you hold it? Hold for a second, Dan. I'm gonna oh. Yeah, maybe some walleye, sauger, white bass. They may not be quite as aggressive, but the sturgeon bite through the ice, and when you hook one, you know it. Got him, got him. Yes! It's good to have friends that know of hot bites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is Slimy good. high fives. Slimy high fives. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, here we go, Jer. Boom. So what Found we've got is uh, fishing on a river, there's current. So it's a whole different program. So we've got the current kind of going this way. So we have holes over here, here. The big ones on the end are double 10 inch holes because these sturgeon get big and they're hard to deal with. So when we hook one, we'll have a better chance of landing them. And then in the middle here, we're jigging because as you can see on the depth finder, there's life everywhere. There's white bass, walleye, sauger. So we've got jigging holes in the middle and yeah, so we're just kind of jigging. And what's cool about all this new technology, whether it's 360 or live, is you can see how many fish are down there, right? And the size of the fish, there's buffalo, there's walleye, there's white bass. And the more you're, you get familiar with it, you can start to figure out what these fish are. But one thing you can't mistake is a big sturgeon. This is really cool. You know, we would normally have, um, depending on the current, you might have to have your flasher set up 
way over there to see the jig because it might sweep it down, but we've got Mega Live and the, the cone is wide enough that we can see the line of holes that we've drilled here. It's also wide enough that it's picking up our baits as they're swinging down, down current too. So right now we're, we're jigging with jigging spoons to see if we can get whatever else. And then we've got the big boy sturgeon sticks over here where we're ready to do battle with one of these prehistoric giants. So all we're doing really is just soaking. It's just, you know, hooking a sinker here, a couple fat heads on the bottom. I just took an egg sinker here and made that glow in the dark and then have that little VMC hybrid treble with size three and then a little cork and a bobber stop. And this is just laying on the bottom and I have not done this before, but Dan and his buddy Joe out here both said it, it's pretty crazy when a huge sturgeon comes by, the bite is just that, that bobber is just barely, barely moving. So we're just keeping a real close eye on the, on the cork, waiting for any signs of movement on that. And then we'll just lift up, start to reel and hopefully do battle. But the idea is the sturgeon should bite at dusk and into after dark. And hopefully we get a little more action with something else in between. But either way, if we catch nothing, Besides the big sturgeon, I'd still be happy. Hopefully we just get one magnum, Dan. That's what I'm, I'm here for. All right, All right Dan, here we go. Joe's Here's the hot one. stick. Joe's got another one. All right, here we go. Joe is hooked up in the fish house next door. Let's see what we got. Sturgeon on. Well, that's pretty cool, Joe. So you saw him for a little bit on the yeah, we, on the bird, and then he, he was he was down there. He was down there at least three minutes before he. Ended. Wow, is that huh. cool? Joe was in the house next door. He, he was talking about how he'd been seeing one, and there was like he said three minutes. The thing was down there, and then bam, hooked up. So this isn't a tiny one, Joe. No, it's a nice fish. Yeah. Joe, talk about like the technique you're using to fight it. Like you're using your hand on the line and. Yeah, well, I let the drag. If he goes to run, you can't stop him. You just gotta let him let him pull. But but you gotta remember, every right now he's just gonna do circles, and every inch you can get from him, the quicker you're gonna get him. Like right now, you it ain't no good. But you gotta go all the way down, like you're saltwater fishing almost. Keep working him up, reel all the way down. You're not really pumping very hard, but you gotta keep keep her nice even bend to it while you're fighting it. There he is. Oh, there nice he is. One. Oh, great, oh, yeah. oh, great uh, fish. Great fish, man. Yeah, you want me great to grab fish. Him? I'll, I'll get a shot right there. Get, get him in. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yes. so yes. cool. right. Look yeah. Up, baby. Come on, girl. Okay. Yeah, it's just a tangler spoon and they'll stick it and one other thing i like to do is do a double split ring off the spoon so it gives me more flexibility when i'm fighting that fish so i'm not fighting the spoon keeps well, you from pulling them out while they're twisting and the other nice thing it gives you something to do to pick those knots out of the double split rings when you're yeah it sure one. does <laughs> give everybody else a chance to get back down before me <laughs> oh she clean yep well, congratulations, man. That is fantastic. Right. Yeah. That is what we came down to do. Oh, oh, slime time. The great sturgeon feel. Yeah. The cousin of the shark. Gotta love him. Look at that tail. So cool. Dan's got his set of buddies here. We've got Joe next door, and then Joe's buddy John next door to that. So we're kind of all in a line along this break here. And we kind of figured that if we set up these three houses along this break line, somebody was going to fire. So it was a little pandemonium. We heard, Joe, oh yeah, we're on. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's not a big one. And then of course, like Sturgeon often do, they go from, ah, nothing special to, oh yeah, it was, that was a nice fish, so. Yeah, there we go. <gasps> oh, Jer! Hooked? Hooked up. Hooked up! And yep. there's still one down, Jer. There's I'm, still one down there. Man, I'm tempted. There's two. We've had like three come You're, through in two minutes. He's going this way. I'm going to keep he's mine still, down Dan's for a still, minute. There's still another one down there. I mean, That's the power of, like, having cool sonar technology like that, it's not just, you you know how many fish specifically are down there. It's fun, I, I can't tell you how big it is to have a hub house. You could do this in a flip over, but if it was cold, you'd have to open up the door to be able to, or the house, the shelter to be able to maneuver. 
This is pretty sweet that we Gosh. can. Here he is, Dan. He's already here? Yep. He's, okay. not, but he's, he's nice, but he's not. All right, here, let me give you Gigano. a hand. Giganto. Oh, yeah, no, he's pretty big, Jer. <laughs> yeah. Well, bigger than anything else you're going to catch ice fishing, right? Oh. <gasps> yep, there we go. Here, get him up and we'll get Pex. Yeah. Yay, Sturgeon! It's pretty wild that uh, just a couple minutes ago we had one of the, I just, I just dumped one of these. Dan, there's another, there's another one down there. We're actually like on a school. We're on some schooling sturgeon right now. Oh man, all right. This doesn't happen very often. The February ice fishing blues, ha! when it's tough to catch just about everything, we just landed on a sweet bite. We are fishing with glow-in-the-dark stuff. I mean, their eyes relative to their, head, to their head aren't very big, but you can see like these frilled nostrils that they have, and then along with barbels, their, their senses are so keen for dark environments. And then I just, my favorite part is their mouth, and this is called a proboscis, is what this is actually called. You can see their mouth comes out, it protrudes like that. It's a really cool feature of these fish, but how streamlined they are. Their bottom is just completely flat. Peck fins are absolutely huge. I mean, these are just super sleek machines for cutting through river current. Absolutely stunning. And then look at their gills, that deep maroon color they have. I'm just in love with these fish. They're so, so cool. I love them. And I'm gonna let him get to be huge. See you, sweetie. Love it. Love it, love it. He's still there, you can still see the bottom. Yep, he's still on. Right underneath ya. He's right underneath you. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, he bumped it, he bumped it. Got him, got him. Yes, yes, yes. All right, I I'll reel up. Yes, that was awesome. Okay. Came through from Dan's side. All right. Yes, Jerry. <laughs> yes. That's not all bad. Sturgeon. Oh, man. So this one, Dan, I don't know that I got him in the mouth. I just saw, so Dan's telling me that anytime the bobber moves, Real, you know, it's not like you're slap setting. It's not like you're doing a, there's slack in the line and then you hit them. You want to just, I just started lifting. I grabbed the rod, I started lifting. The bobber moved into his weight, so I Well, yeah, that's all and, you can do, you know, your ice but fishing. Look at is. that. So this is obviously not traditional walleye gear. This is stuff, if you lake trout fish, it's your lake trout rod. I mean, it's bigger, bigger gear. I've got a 3,000 size reel on. This is the Apex Predator, St. Croix's big, big dog rod you can see it's a great stick it's it's like this is a perfect stick for doing this type of thing absolutely you want that flex i'm gonna tighten up a little bit here why don't i get over here jeers are you yep. good with the heater on yeah yeah okay. i like being warm dan yep i just don't want to burn your line and so i've got suffix 832 and 20 pound so it's not uh Crazy heavy line, but the if you've got a good reel with a good drag, doesn't matter. But I actually spooled this up with the full 150 line, just because. It's a good. You call. don't know. I mean, that, that really, you could get a fish that's 100 pounds when you're doing this, and it's possible that that sucker runs, and you're going to want all the capacity you've got. You don't catch big fish through the ice in very many places, so it's pretty cool to have an opportunity to do this. Chance the wind off here. your back. Here we go. Oh, Whoa, he, came oh he came through the yeah, wrong hole. Oh, Jared, it's a nice one. It's a nice here. one. I'll, uh, if you, um, I don't want to get whacked. Uh oh, what's oh, no, going on? Oh, oh no, is, is he on the Mega Live? He got caught in the transducer, yeah. Oh. Okay, we got him. Okay, are we good? Okay, we're good. Here we go. All right. Up. Dan, why are you so scared of the. I don't like getting hit in the forehead with a, with a bullet sinker. <laughs> I put my glasses on. You got him right in this. I did get him in the. I, yep, he ate. He ate he it. Ate. 
he ate that. Yeah, well, here I am. All right. It's a nice one. It's a really nice one, Jerry. Okay, I'm gonna stand back up. I, if you're gonna get him, I need to. I'm gonna get him and I'm gonna go maybe this way with him. Okay. See, the line keeps cutting in. Oh, he's right there. Boom. Yeah! Sturgeon! Big old Sturge, Jerry! Uh, yes! Look at that, that's fantastic, man. That is super, super awesome. Yes! yes. Total success. Hey, this opportunity does not happen everywhere in the ice belt, but where it does, Great Lakes, a select number of rivers throughout the Midwest. You should give it a try, man. What a fantastic, fantastic thing to do through the ice. Wow, wow, Oof. wow. Let's get ourselves a little pliers here. All right, you want to pop them out for me, my friend? There you bet. That is super cool. Super, super cool. These fish don't have bones. They've got cartilage. Their bones are exhibited in their scutes, which are more obvious when they're younger, which run along the lateral line here and then in the, the back. So they can basically touch their tail to their nose because it's all cartilage for their nodal cord. It was their spine and they're, they're related to sharks. They're prehistoric. They're not available in every to every lake and every place throughout the, the ice belt, but where they are available, seasons are now open. In much of Minnesota, we've got uh, opportunities to fish for Lake Sturgeon, Wisconsin. There's opportunities and throughout the Great Lakes region, these guys can be fished for, they can be caught, and you should go out and get your ice fishing gear full of sturgeon slime <laughs> one of these days because they really are awesome. It'll be the biggest fish you ever catch through a hole in the ice. Thank you, Dan. Absolutely. My All right. pleasure. This it's is... good to have friends that know of hot bites. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thing of beauty. <laughs> Sturgeon slime. Yeah, this slimy good. high fives. Slimy high fives. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Now, if you've ever wanted to record some of your underwater strikes, I've got a great product for you. It's the AquaView Strike View. Now, this is an inline HD recording camera. It's waterproof and it's perfect for trolling, rigging, and jigging applications. It'll stare right at your bait and it's gonna record some of the most unique and cool strikes underwater. Now, if you're gonna be targeting big fish this winter, you wanna make sure you have the right line. Suffix 832 Ice Braid is a great option. This is their 20 pound. Now it has no stretch, it's super sensitive, and it works great for big lakers, big northern pike, and big walleye. Now, new to the clam this year is the Stoplight Bobber. Now, what's unique about this bobber is it glows in the dark, so before you have a strike, it's gonna glow green, and when you do get a strike, it changes colors to red. So it's great for those low light conditions or if you have a dead stick that's a little further away from your hole, you can see it from a distance and you'll know you have a bite. Now for you anglers wanting to add a little extra action to your favorite spoon this winter, new this year to Clam is their Feathered Gaff Treble. Now it comes in three different sizes, 12, 10, and eight, and it comes in four different color options. It's a great option for adding a little extra to your favorite spoon. Here I've got a big fish lure that you don't need to fish with live bait and it's the Raffala Slab Wrap in a size five. Now this bait gives off a great action. It darts around and really calls in fish from a distance. It also works great for multi-species, so you can catch bass, walleye, northern pike, and trout on it. Here I've got the VMC Rattle Spoon. Now this spoon comes in four different sizes, from 1 16th ounce up to 3 8 ounce. It comes in 14 different colors, including glow and UV options, and it's just a great multi-purpose spoon for walleyes, bass, pike, panfish, you name it. Now a great time to catch big lake trout, big northern pike, and big walleye is late in the season. The one thing with late ice is you're gonna need a power extension. So here I've got the Strike Master Power Auger Extension. Now this can attach to any Strike Master Auger. Now they make a 12 and 20 inch option. And if you're gonna be heading north late this ice season, you gotta get yourself an auger extension. 
Now one piece of equipment every ice angler should have is a good chisel. Here I've got the Lakes and Rivers 64 inch two piece chisel. Now it's great for checking early ice and the really nice thing about this chisel is it breaks into two pieces and is easy to store. Now this show has been all about big fish so I've got to show you a big fish reel. Here I've got the Daiwa Regal in a 3000 size. It's got 10 ball bearings and an ultra smooth drag system so it can handle those long runs. It's got a larger spool to hold the heavier line and it's just an affordable great big fish reel. Now I'm going to go check out. I'll meet you back at the Yeti because we've got a few more things to show you. Now this is a big fish show and I got a big fish bait for you. New this year from Northland is the level headed predator tube. Now they come in two different sizes, a five inch, one ounce, or a six inch, one and a half ounce. And if you're gonna be targeting big fish this winter, you gotta get yourself a few. Now, if you're gonna be using big baits, you gotta make sure you have the right rod for the job at hand. And I've got two great options for you. The first is the LTP by Tuned Up Custom Rods. It's their Lake Trout Precision Rod. Now this is a 42 inch heavy rod with a moderate action. It's a fiberglass rod, so it's great for absorbing those big head shakes from lake trout, but you can also use it for pike, sturgeon, or anything else that's big that swims. Now the second rod I want to talk to you about is the St. Croix CCI Apex Predator. Now this is a 42 inch rod. It's a heavy power with a moderate action. It's got recoil guides, which is great for fishing outside. You can knock that ice right off. It's a really solid blank that loads into some nice backbone, and it's just a great stick for targeting big fish. Now, this one's for all you ice campers out there. Now, the Dakota Lithium Multifunctional Inverter has four USB ports, two AC 110 volt plugins. Now, it can be powered with a 12 volt battery using the alligator clips. It also has a 12 volt socket, and it's just the ultimate power source for the outdoorsman. Now, the last product I want to talk to you about is the Hummingbird Apex, specifically with the Mega Live. Now, what's great about the Apex is it has HDMI capabilities. Well, why that's important is because we're able to hook it up to the big screen in the fish house. Now it's great because you're able to see fish come in from a distance and it's fun for the whole house because you can watch multiple holes. Now it's time to head west to catch some big Lakers at Fort Peck. Hooked up in Fort Peck. <laughs> there you go. What size is he? I don't know. I haven't seen him. <laughs> sort of nice with this clear ice. You'll be able to see him down yeah. below the hole. Like, well, there oh, he is. there he is. Ooh, nice one, fish. Huh? Wow. Oh. Look at that. Wow. Oh. Wow. Look at that. Oh, no. Oh, God. Came off. Oh. <laughs> you know, Ty and I actually had the good fortune to fish for lake trout all over North America which includes where? Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Manitoba, Ontario. And right now we're on Fort Peck in uh, Montana. And there's some fabulous lake trout fishing out here, Flathead Lake, uh, as well as Flaming Gorge in Wyoming. But we're gonna give it a whirl. But that was his first little rascal. That was a good one. The nice thing is that, that this, we're on clear ice. We could actually see him before he got off. It was unfortunate. That was my <laughs> first one of the day. And, <laughs> oh man, we were jumping around and this is a perfect area. We're, we're like 46 feet here, but it just drops off to yeah. deep water, and those things yeah, are just right hanging out. Yeah, right out in these holes out in here, it's almost 100 foot of water, real sheer drop. But we're gonna keep on chunk and see if we can get some of these little rascals on the ice. You know, it's sort of inter. Up, oh, you know, we fish lake trout. As you're saying, uh, Ty fished them all over through the ice. I think it feels like a good one. But the interesting thing is, is no matter where you fish them, a lot of times you're fishing the same depth uh, pattern. You know, a lot of times throughout the uh, winter period, we'll catch them between, uh, on the shallow side, a lot of them at about 45, and on the deep side, you know, down to 100 or so. But it always seems like the same depth pattern wherever you fish them. You know, we're fishing in Fort Peck right now, and some of the boys say they were catching them super deep, but sometimes, you know, I caught a big one yesterday fishing for walleyes in probably about 25 feet. So, you know, they, they have the, they roam a lot, but the thing is, is, you know, if you really, to specifically target them, it's uh, that 50 to about 100 is really a pretty key depth. You know, right now what we're on, this is actually a big drain a draw, and we're on the tip of a point, and then there's a, a ditch that cuts in here, which is a natural bait trap. A lot of times we fish these fish and hunt them, uh, 
in spots where there's a natural sort of V or a trough where they can uh, trap the bait. Boy, this is a, feels like a big animal. Whoa. <laughs> they, they, every one of them, they, that's one thing, the average size in this lake is really sort of interesting. They're like seven, to, they're all seven to 15 pounds with the top end side going into the 20, low 20s. It's pretty interesting where these fish are coming from though too. I mean, they're all coming right off the bottom, bottom holding yeah. tight on the bottom. bottom. Yeah, right now they are anyway. Well, they're really up to, lake trout, especially really big ones, are really scavengers. You know, you have a lot of like tulabies and uh, ciscos in here. And a lot of, there's so many of those fish in there, and what happens is there's, you know, they're cyclically dying off, so the bottom is a pretty good spot for them. You know, they gra graze on anything that's on the bottom. Come here. Boy, it's tough to get them. There you go. Come on. Oh, yeah, touch come, your line. Come, come on. Yep. There you go. They got there it. you go. Thank Nothing you. Nothing wrong with that. Huh? That guy. That's a good sign. You, you can pop them out for me. We'll get her back in the drink. Boy, he was a real whippersnapper. They are spot, fun. Look at that. Man, is that a good, fun, beautiful, is that a beautiful fish? Listen, I'm croaking. Boy, look at that. Aren't they just gorgeous? Very pretty. They, they actually stocked these fish in, the, in the Fort Peck in the 1950s. There's actually uh, some natural reproduction, but they supplementally stock these fish annually. And there's a tremendous population of them in here. There we go. Wow. He's ready to go. Boy, that's special. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no matter what bait you're fishing, when you're fishing for lake trout, they can be anywhere in the water column from right underneath the ice to the bottom in 90 foot of water. So what we're doing is we're dropping the bait down, jigging it on the bottom, and then you get a uh, cycle through in above five to 10 foot increments up to like in 90, I'll probably fish it up to about 50 or so. And then if I'm you know, shallow or I'll fish it about halfway down, so you're moving the bait up and down. A lot of times these fish might, when they're actively feeding, they'll be suspended pretty high off the bottom. It's not uncommon to catch them 25, 30 feet off the bottom when they're actively hunting. Any type of ice predator or ice fishing situation, these are unquestionably the most aggressive uh, sport fish you can catch. You know what I mean? Like so many of our other fish, you know, they're actually warm water species, lake trout, it doesn't make any difference. They're super aggressive underneath the ice. You can see them when you're reeling the bait up and I might be 15 or 20 feet off the bottom, the fish will come from 15 to 20 foot and just like a rocket ship and drill the bait. One of the real mainstream baits is a tube. This is a five inch white uh, big bite tube. It's got a pretty heavy uh, head in there anywhere from, you know, anywhere from a half to three quarter to a one ounce. Uh, you'll notice that I actually have a smaller minnow profile that's a big bite slim minnow a little bit larger five inch jerk jerk minnow and then i got a, a four inch uh, swim bait over here this is a really good bait too uh three ounce or an ounce and a half to three ounce crippled herring lure jensen crippled crippled herring and then last but not least a jigging wrap one vitally important point when ice fishing big lakes like fort peck is ice safety any large expansive body of water can see dramatic shifting ice conditions that are changing constantly based on wind direction and air temperature. On this particular trip, we saw cracks that opened up several feet in a short period of time, even though the ice was over a foot thick. In general, we avoided these areas by simply driving on land for a bit, going around the dangerous or sketchy looking pressure ridges. Almost every year, people put four-wheelers, sleds, and trucks through the ice in the North Country. While it can be incredible fishing, you do have to be very, very careful every time you go out on the ice. There, I got him that there time. You got him. <laughs> there you Third go. Third time's a charm. <laughs> You got one of those little wranglers? I don't know, it might be. <laughs> He's coming up fairly easy, but it took him three times to finally get a hold of it. Wow, you got a bunch of bait in there too. Holy yeah. mackerel. Look at all First the, time look he at all, look, at all, look at the size, look at that school of bait in here. Wow. I mean it's just Oh, that's his, that's his vapor trail. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you know, Oh, that's from the uh Okay. I don't think he's very big, but let's see him. Coming right up. Yep, there he is. Oh, hey. Nothing wrong with that, there, though. Nope. Lake trout's a lake trout's a lake trout. Tell you what, if you like ice fishing, you gotta give lake trout a try. Because they're so much fun. And you know what? A bonus to that? 
is the scenery. Wherever lake trout swim, it seems like the, the scenery is absolutely beautiful too. I mean, you look around and we're in Montana. It's just a, an awesome place to be. And when you can catch lake trout to boot, well, I think that's a win-win. You know, one thing that this is a really aggressive sort of power fishing type of ice fishing when you're fishing for lake trout. What we do is we'll pull up on a point and we're going to pull and cut holes probably close to almost 100 feet away from each other. So we're going to pull up on an inside corner or a tip of a point or a sunken hump. But as you can see, we're cutting holes a distance apart. The reason being is these fish have such big vision. And they, a lot of times, the first time, it's so weird because a lot of times you cut, you cut holes like that and you get one hooked up like that fast. It's just ama it's amazing. I mean, that's why you, you really move and groove. We cover a lot of ground real quickly. You look at that. Actually, you know, a lot, a lot of people, this is a, a 2,500 size reel for ice fishing because you want quite a bit of line on, on it. For this reason. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. And the other reason is because you're fishing in such deep water, you can, with the smaller spools, it puts a lot of line twist with, you know, we're dropping tubes and spoons in these uh, minnow profiles and it's, you know, it's, it's spinning on the way down and coming up. So, but the, that larger profile spool works a lot better for ice fishing when you're fishing for large predators like this. Ooh, this guy here. Oop, ooh. This is what this is. I got this uh, CCI, this uh, trophy taker, and these are like a really sort of nice for fighting fish. It's got a little bit more of that softer roll for the when these big fish, you know, they have such big head pumps to them. You can see how the rod loads and unloads as the fish is, is shaking. This might be a big customer. Yeah, it is. I'm sort of prepared for them. I got 15 pound braid on here with about. 15 or 20 feet of fluorocarbon, the same 15 pound test with an FG knot, then a barrel swivel, and then the, uh, the jig, which is about two foot below the barrel swivel. Wow. Man, oh man. Gotta be getting close. Uh, wow, there he is, wow. Oh yeah, yeah. Here comes wow. the bubbles. Wow. Ooh, Ooh look at that thing. That's oh, man. a big sucker. Oh man. Wow. Get his head up, Jimmy. I know, I'm trying. Here he comes. Come on. Wow, that looks like a real, he's a real pig piglet there. Come here, come here. Oh, there, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Wow. Come on, come on. Oh, <laughs> he's gosh. Gonna... Come on. He's got come that on. Bait Oh, there crunch. you go, there you go. There you go. Yeah, get, get that little rascal oh, out yeah. of there. There <laughs> you that go. Tubble. <laughs> <Holy> <laughs> no. He's a real tubble lard. I'll take my hands. Look at that thing. Wow. <laughs> What a beautiful, look at that mouth on him. <laughs> you can see those suckers are re real serious uh, trout as a predator. Look at that thing. Look at the size of that mouth. You can see they could eat big, belly on that thing. big, big baits. Boy, are they beautiful. Look at that thing. The cool thing is, it's like there's a bunch of these little rascals in there. Boy, look at that. Man, we can't beat the weather either. Right now it's about 45 degrees and we left home, it's about 20 below. We hit it right. <laughs> yeah, we'll get that little runt back in the water. Come on, whoa, wow. That is that was a cool. serious fish, holy <laughs> mackerel. You can see what I caught that fish on. This is a, uh, a half ounce VMC Moon Eye, real light wire hook, which is nice. It hooks them really easily. And then I actually have a five inch uh, big bite uh, minnow profile on there. But the thing is, you're not afraid to use big baits. A lot of times we use actually pretty good sized swim baits, five, seven inch swim baits. Uh, when you're fishing for targeting big fish, really, you know, five to seven inch tubes, same thing. And the only color to go with, white. <laughs> go with white would be my, my, my suggestion. Okay, we'll see, maybe he's got a buddy down there. We'll see. That wraps up this episode of Angling Buzz Ice. Make sure to head to our website where you can sign up for our newsletter. We'll also be releasing new content each week on our social platforms. Thanks for watching and stay safe out on the ice. Let's go. Cool.